Welcome everybody to the video today. So what I'm gonna show here was an event that goes on uh, every year here annually that's called Super Nanai. It's the super moms. It's the moms in the community that uh, are showing their talents and their beauty and all that being a mother does not make you not beautiful anymore, that you're still beautiful forever. So that's what this little event is and it's sponsored with school children. Uh, different grade classes and the teachers uh, do little intermission performances. I didn't record all of them. It went up through different grade levels. Uh, there was talent shows and all. It was just hard to record it all because the whole event lasted for like five hours or so, I swear. And so I had to condense it down, but it was really great. It was an enjoyable time and just uh, sit here and watch the sexy mamas perform in the community here and thank you for watching our video today and stick around here right after the parts here with the super moms we're also going to have a little hangout time just one-on-one -on -one with justin carmack the critter hunter and uh stick around for that and i hope you enjoy just us just hanging out with each other and just chatting away talking away so that'll be right after the super moms i can feel it in my bones and nothing to ask them got me looking like a clown someone always slides down tell me i'll be what i eat can i do the got my needs who's the girl and kill the sound Let's down. Uh, I can tell that you're a dancer. Throwing your hands in the air that you answer. When I ask you if you want me, you're a panther. I'm a little too full, boy, you a trans girl. I put on left, right, it just says cancer. I can go change if you want to. I mean, no, I mean, no things that you don't do. I won't put a foot on the floor unless I am sure. You just jump head first, hope for an encore. Oh, I can feel it in my bones, and it's them to us some more. Got me looking like a clown. Summer always let us down. Tell me I'll be what I eat. Can't help it, I got my knees. Close the curtain, kill the sound. Summer always let us down. Hey, hey, dirty chicks, you got plenty of them. Hey, hey, my kicks, come on, turn the dozen. Hey, hey, blah, blah, then you walk away. And I turn to the pipe to forget your name. Like Lenny, I imagine that you like me. Like many, I don't know who I'm trying to be. I'm sure I was wrong, but so were you. So go up your high horse, shovel the goo. Inside her mind 
does she notice the things I notice? How her eyes wander the room when it gets quiet, searching for solutions in the silence. But I'm here. I'm here. Other side, other side. Go through the, go out that gate and go back around. Where'd you park at? <laughs> come on, man. What's up, buddy? Come on, come on, come on. Come up here and join in, everyone. So what do you think about the high tower? <laughs> Literally high tower. Huh? Yeah, living up to my name. Yeah, this is a great location, man. This is going to be... In 10 years, this is a million dollar property, I think. And then all those plans you're telling me about Elo Elo, I really want to look into that because that's crazy. Yeah. Trains and uh, we saw all those new buses around town. I yeah. didn't know that was replacing the jeepneys. That's yeah, crazy. yeah. I was like, I need one of those for, that's like a live uh It is perfect for like a road RV, tour. <laughs> RV, yeah. Put a bed in there. Yeah. They're not huge. They're like a third the size of a series bus. I just hope it don't price all of us out from being here. You're already here, though. You're, you're nestled in like a bug. That's the good thing. I am already nestled in. And if I, I was thinking, if I had to build this house today or buy this property today, I wouldn't. It would just be the... Yeah, you're the, telling me those little tiny ones are uh, 6000 and above per square meter? I could buy... That uh, was the old price. Oh the new God. price is ten to 12000 per square meter. I could buy a resort... Uh, location like the beach locations in Darwin. yeah uh, we're looking at like six thousand is a lot per square meter so it's amazing well I did, I did some walk and talk videos up there recently I was showing you know we actually have trash cans along the streets and they empty them they empty them yeah yeah I've been doing this tour of the Philippines this week and just seeing all these little things I wish we could do in my my city in Darwin. And I'm telling you, bacala has got a lot happening over there, too. Man, they're doing some yeah. real big, huge upscale projects over there. And it's actually the same ones that's doing it here in Iloilo are the same ones doing the projects over there yeah. in Bacala too. Which kind of makes sense because I don't know if you know the history, but these are called sister cities. The city of love and the city of smiles. Now they're making that bridge. Right. And so Iloilo was first. And Bacala really didn't even exist. And there was wealthy... Uh, Spanish and Filipino Spanish families uh, 
that were here and they went over yeah they went over and started those plantations long ago over in Bacala right now it's sugar cane season you'll be behind uh there's trucks that are this tall as sugar cane I know I stayed over in Negros for all that's where I began my journey in the Philippines years ago was in Negros behind, like, caravans of those trucks it will drive you crazy and it's falling off the truck sometimes or oh, the tires them. blow out yeah. boom <laughs> they're, they're probably rated for nine tons and they got 30 tons on right there. and the cabin looks like the chassis looks like it's from like 1930s or something 99 coats of paint on it man that's some good soil over in negros man it's a growing soil Miles and miles and hours of uh, sugar cane. And Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But when I used to ride the buses over there, they just pull over and the people would jump out of the bus, run out into the sugar cane, pee, poo, come back on the bus, <laughs> fertilizing the crops. <laughs> when they get stuck in traffic, yeah. all the kids from the school will come out and steal a uh, sugar cane. Or they, they can't even pull it out sometimes, so we were watching them just like, like biting, biting the on sugar it. cane on the back of the truck before it left. <laughs> the only thing about this level right here, see, is those trees block that view. But up there, it's going to be a whole nother story, though. See, James, you messed up. You need a tree house right on top of that. <laughs> I wouldn't trust a tree house in that. I don't think that tree stays standing with my big butt up there swinging in it. <laughs> To get up. You ever seen those rats up in the coconut trees? Yeah. Man. Usually they make the uh, the metal sleeves so they can't climb any higher. Yeah, I know. I need to do that. But I watched a rat go from tree to tree to tree like a squirrel does. That's, that's how I know it's time to move. You got a squirrel rat. Yeah, they'll, they'll actually just walk right on those and walk to the next one and walk to the next one and the next one. And they like going to this end one right here and they're always chewing up those young coconuts and they're falling to the ground like the little bitty How small big ones. Is it? Big old rat, man. You know, cat size rats. Coconut? Well, you uh, the size of one of these feral cats. In fact, the rats look healthier than the cats do. Cap encountered one of those down at his house the other day. Man, I'm telling you. That'd be a boxing match right there. <laughs> Most people come to the Philippines and they cut down the tree to make the view. And I ain't Texans, doing that. Texans, they go over the tree. Just go over the tree. I like the trees better. I'd rather have the trees. I can build this faster than I can grow another tree. I won't be around long enough to see the tree get up that tall. Now what do you got going on here with this pole? So that's filled full of concrete. And I'm gonna put um, solar lights out here because there's a dark zone. The barangay has some lights right down here next door. And there's a lot of young girls and people pass through here in the dark at night. And they walk along this beach and, and there's nothing here. It's really just pitch black dark. And then on down there a ways again, there's some lights again. So to kind of make it a little bit more secure for the local people and all, I'm gonna put up some solar lights. So I have one right here on the Baya Kubo. There's on my other side. I have a solar light up there right now. And uh, so it makes it a little bit safer walk at night, walking by here and all. It, a little security for us too, but it's really nice to have that that there. Yeah, nice, nice. Not, not, not dark in front of your place. It's nice beach too. You got, man, you're a part of the you're like nestled into the community here. You're you're like a pillar now. Yeah, I enjoy the community here. Uh, I really, honestly, I enjoy the simple people. My the the squatters, the poor people next door. I enjoy them more than anybody. I really do like them. See, a lot of a lot of foreigners. I tell people that all the time down in Dowin, Dumaguete. Uh, they don't understand this. Uh, every foreigner has a reputation here in the Philippines, whether it's good or bad. They don't know it but every Filipino knows everybody. Like you said, you told them not to cut this log. Yeah. One person and nobody, the whole nobody area. It. Yeah, so leave Melinda's you, piece of wood alone. They so, left it alone. So if you treat people good here, that word gets around. And this guy's cool. This guy, don't mess with him, you know. But if you're a bad person, you never tip, you know, the parking lot guy or the hotel guy or yeah. the restaurant guy. You know, especially places you go to, all, my barber, 
It's 50 pesos for a haircut. I give him 100, 150. Who do you think he likes better, me <laughs> or the guy that's complaining all the time? So right. I think you're the guy that everybody loves around here. They take care of you. Yeah, I don't. I don't get along perfect with everybody. In every crowd, there's going to be somebody that you're going to rub. It's always impossible, wrong. but you have if they complain, all everybody else around be like, ah, shut up, that guy's cool. That's that just recently happened here on the beach last weekend. Somebody made a little trouble for us over here minding our own business drinking they're drinking right and the lady comes over i watch your videos and it's not just about building your house yeah. i think it should be more building like a part of the community building your home like you were i didn't know this by watching videos how ingrained you are in your neighborhood your community yeah. your neighbors and everything because i see a lot of not even just channels but my friends building or not friends but neighbors building houses and they're completely shut off. They're building like, you know, they never even met their neighbors or they, they're they pissed off. They're shooting the dogs or poisoning <laughs> the, the neighbor's dogs. No, or none of that here. They get a bad, like I said, every foreigner in the Philippines has a reputation, good or bad. Yeah, it's kind of like this this guy right here, that little house there. It's just, you don't look like much of a house, yeah. but it's his home. And he's not there now because his work transferred. Well, he had some dogs that he took care of from his old job. He would be able to bring leftover food and rice from their Caladaria there at the place he worked as security guard. And he would feed these dogs there, right? We kind of complained because he drew up a lot of strays and those strays are out here pooping everywhere, right? And I, I, in my heart, Mel and I up there privately were complaining all these dogs, these dogs, these dogs. But then when he went away and those dogs don't have a source of food anymore, we started feeling sorry for the dogs. <laughs> so now we're taking them out scraps and stuff. So it's kind of funny, you know. Now we're the one. Well, I've had of a little. I've to complain sometimes. I've got but. an attitude adjustment. I still have to work on myself. I still flare up every once in a while, honestly, because it was my upbringing back in Texas. You know, you stand your ground. You stand for what was right. You know, we have this known stigma of us as Texans. You know, that don't mess with Texas. And I've been my whole life. I've grown up that way. The Philippines has changed me a lot, but sometimes my old characteristics of I'm going to stand my ground still pop out in me. It's impossible to get rid of it, but, yeah. you know, like in Texas or I'm from Colorado, the mountains, you have to be assertive and look somebody in the eye and shake your hand hard to get respect. But here, you get respect in a whole different way by being kind and all those things that we totally don't care about in Texas, Colorado you get respect a whole different way. So it's hard for us to like transition. It'll never go away for me yeah. completely, but I have to, you know, this, I always told people uh, when I was a travel writer, uh, this country, that country, this culture was built for their people. They wasn't built and built around you. So you have to adapt to that. Yeah. This is your adopted uh, home. You're ado they, they've accepted you. You have to adapt to them, not the other way. You're not gonna teach anybody yep. a lesson. I mean, we talked about it earlier. There's so many common sense things that we don't understand, but you gotta laugh and you gotta. So I think you're doing a, an awesome job at this. Uh... I'm still on a journey. I still got lessons to learn. My wife has helped me a lot, but sometimes I have to catch her. She's the one getting the yeah, Texas oh, attitude. Yeah. I left her in Texas too long. <laughs> my wife sees things through my eyes now, so on the road she's like, ah, get out of the road, you know, like somebody cutting me off. I'm like, Judea, calm down. We're like, I shouldn't have taught you that. Yeah. <laughs> She's saying bad words. The other day, we're on the phone with my mom, and this girl, you know my wife, innocent, and she accidentally said a cuss word, not even thinking about it, just saying what I say. Yeah. She's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I said that to your mom. I'm so sorry, Mom. My mom's laughing. <laughs> so. That's funny. <laughs> well, you're a great ambassador for uh, the foreigners. Well, I want to be, but I still have I still have my downfalls, but I'm, I'm trying, and I this poor simple community over here but i love all these people man i mean i really do um i know them i know their kids i know their grandkids i know which ones are cousins which who and all that and it, it's like a big old family to me it really is and they all know james i asked down the road when i got lost where's james uh, my wife said texas filipino but they're like oh come come with me i know where he is <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's a great place down through here I tell you, it's like the, this boat here, somebody lifted my gas, whatever. 
but I got down there and I realized that the gas is gone. But, you know, one of the guys that works for me all the time, on his day off, he's seen me walking down the beach with a gas can. He leaves his friends that he's enjoying and hanging out with, having a good time. Jumps up, runs, grabs his gas can from me. I don't even know that he knows where my boat is. But he makes a straight beeline to right where it was at. They know everything. They know everything. The Coconut Telegraph knows everything. I'm telling you, the uh, Filipino grapevine, everybody knows the foreigners. And he had the gas can in my boat, and they're down there, and the locals down there and a whole different barangay are pushing my boat out for me. They don't want nothing. They're happy. They're just, it was awesome. And I wasn't expecting him to leave his friends and do that for the guy that he works for, you know. Yeah, but you take he was care happy. Of yeah, I would say two things. Uh, you take care of people, they take care of you, even just like emotionally. There's guys that always say you come here with no friends and you're re they're really lonely. I think it's really hard if you're a good person to be lonely here. Of all the Asian, I mean, maybe all the countries I've been to, it's really hard to stay lonely here. Uh, you got friends immediately everywhere. And the second thing, it, yeah, the same thing happened to me. I mentioned on a video that my AC stopped working. And then a week later, I went diving. I got out of the water, my car was gone. My wife thought it was stolen, and I was like, ah, who gives a shit? Everybody, somebody's messing with me, or everybody here knows me. So I go in the dive center, I'm having uh, lunch or whatever. I come back, uh, somebody comes and gives me my keys, like, oh, I fixed your AC. <laughs> it, was, it was my friend, it was uh, my that dive is so guy. Cool. My friend just stole my car, came back. He tried to get it done by the time I was, uh, before I was done diving. He was going to surprise you. But he didn't take money. I mean, he took. I, I forced money on him, but uh, that's pretty cool. I wasn't even. If if my car was missing in Colorado, I'm calling the police. Right, right. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you and Jadia being here. She seems like she's enjoying with Melinda up there. Yeah, they're already best friends. She yeah. makes friends everywhere, but Melinda's and nice. Melinda was so excited y'all were coming. She'd been looking at eyeballing all day. She spotted y'all quick too. And uh, I think the sun's about to set on us, and let's just go up here and hang out and have a good time. Yeah. Everybody, watch Justin Critter Hunter, Justin Carmack. He's got two different channels, okay? And I'm going to put a link to both of them. And one of them, he covers more of his personal life, and he covers his uh, journey of losing down weight, which you've already lost, like, what, 100 pounds or something, 78. right? 78. 78, and which is just amazing. And then he's big time in diving. Um, he is wonderful dive videos definitely watch that on critter hunter um he, he's got good content i really like the dive videos a lot that's how i came about knowing him because i love ocean life sailing and the diving stuff that's and that's I, how he came that's in why the picture I'm down in Dowin, man the marine biology and underwater videography is my my passion so that's really that's the spot to be at the moment so that's that's how him and i got connected not just through the YouTube channels, but because of his content that I like and I want to support him as his channel grows. And uh, it's been supportive for years, yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you're here, buddy. Good to finally meet you. <laughs> I can't pronounce it, but it's your really city, not like we're it's not really like we're strangers though because we've communicated. I just so talked much. to you the other day on video. Yeah, on it's video so funny. Channel. Yeah.